Let's go ahead and get started then. We'll call the meeting to order. Welcome you all to the January 3rd, 2022 Town of Franklin Council meeting. We'd like to start and I'd like to ask our Vice Mayor, Mr. Joe Collins, if he would lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The next item on our agenda is the uh, swearing in of our uh, newest council member. So, Mr. Adam Kinsey, if you will come up, please. Why don't we uh, Why don't we do this this way? I'll, I'll put the uh, I'll put the bottle right there, and then. Smile for the camera. <laughs> okay. Um, it's been uh, determined by our clerk that uh, Mr. Kimsey, Adam Kimsey, uh, Mr. Adam Robert Kimsey, his full name, if you didn't know that, uh, has uh, certified that Mr. Kimsey meets all the qualifications to serve as a council member of the Franklin Town Council. You all may recall Mr. Kimsey did serve one previous term on the council for four years and declined to run for re-election, but he has uh, agreed to step in and cover the last two years of my unexpired term. So it's an, it's an unusual and a great honor for me, able, for me to be able to swear in my successor. So thank you for taking that opportunity and let's uh, start with the swearing in. If you would put your left hand on the Bible, raise your right hand. Now let me change sides with you. That'll be a little easier. And you can repeat after me. Now, this uh, oath of office has your full name on it. I know everybody goes by it. You go by Adam. So we'll use your full name because that's the way it is in the official record, if that's okay. Perfect. Okay. I, Adam Robert Kimsey. I, Adam Robert Kimsey. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution. That I will support the Constitution. Of the United States. Of the United States. So help me God. So help me God. I, Adam Robert Kimsey. I, Adam Robert Kimsey. Do solemnly swear. Do and solemnly sincerely swear, swear. And sincerely swear. That I will be faithful. That I will be faithful. And bear true allegiance. And bear true allegiance. To the state of North Carolina. To the state of North Carolina. And the constitutional powers. And the constitutional powers. And authorities. And authorities. Which are or may be established. Which are or may be established. For the government thereof. For the government thereof. And that I will endeavor. And that I will endeavor to support. To support. Maintain and defend. Maintain and defend the constitution of said state. The constitution of said state. Not inconsistent with. Not inconsistent with the constitution of the United States. The constitution of the United States. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. I, Adam Robert Kimsey. I, Adam Robert Kimsey. Do swear. Do swear. That I will truly and honestly demean myself. Truly and honestly will demean myself. In the office of council member. In the office of council member. Of the town of Franklin. Of the town of Franklin. <clears throat> according to the best of my knowledge. According to the best of my knowledge. And ability. And ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations, Mr. Kimsey. If you'll take this to the clerk, he'll sign it up. And I'll, I'll give you a few minutes to say something if you like. I'd like to, Mr. Kimsey, uh, have an opportunity to say anything he'd like to say at this point. I'd just like to thank the town and the, the, the council for the uh, opportunity. Uh, it's an honor to be uh, able to fulfill Jack's remainder of his term, and I hope I can do the best job I can possibly do. Thank you all. Thank you, Mr. Kempsey. Thank you. 
Next item on our agenda is, uh, uh, is the adoption of the uh, January 3rd, 2022 Town Council Agenda. Is there a motion from the board concerning the approval of the, of the agenda for tonight's meeting? So moved. Thank you, Rita. Is there a second? Thank you, Mike. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor, uh, please uh, signify it by raising your hand. And since we have one remote person, we'll have to make sure that the clerk records each person's vote. So if you would raise your hand in favor of the motion. Okay. All those, uh, those opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Yeah. Thank you. You have also with you uh, in tonight's agenda the uh, consent agenda and the items on there uh, you've, you've had uh, time to look at those hopefully before the meeting. Is there a motion concerning the approval of the consent agenda for tonight's meeting? So moved. Pardon me? So moved. Thank you Mike. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Thank you Mr. Collins. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor of the motion, please signify it by raising your hand so the clerk can record. Those opposed by like sign, the motion carries unanimously. The consent agenda is approved. Public hearings, we have no public hearings scheduled that I'm aware of, but uh, we do have public session and we have uh, uh, someone signed up for a public session. It looks like Gary and Virginia Murphy if you are here for a public session, you're welcome to come to the microphone and speak to the board at this time. Thank you. Uh, I hit 82 years old last month, so I'm going to read my speech. Okay. <laughs> Basically, you tend to drift if you don't read it. Now, they don't have a teleprompter here. But, uh, just to summarize, we were here last year trying to get a patio. We really didn't have a perfect plan, and... Uh, we kind of were talking about buying the land, leasing the plan. We went through all the legal ramifications of the different kinds of leases and the different ways. And we ended up kind of like not, uh, I think we did finally get a lease, but uh, he wanted us to move our densities 100 yards back in the parking lot and identify the town. And that was a no brainer. But the city manager has convinced me that uh, no brainer if we don't identify the town so we've agreed that the new lease can identify the town anyway this is a attempt again uh, it's early in the season if we're going to have a patio it needs to be done by may uh, last year i think we were a little late in the season where we kind of got too excited and then just gave up but anyway the root and barrel is requesting a three-year lease on the 600 square feet of land next to our building theoretically you have a drawing uh, it's in front of you, the uh, same drawing as last year, uh, to construct an attractive outdoor patio. My son, Arrowwood Construction, will be responsible to build it, and he builds pretty high quality stuff. Uh, unfortunately, it will cost us more than it should, but it will be attractive. We fed, this year, you might not understand it, but 38,000 customers came in and out of that building right next to you. They're from all over the country. With the, uh, the pandemic, people were here from every state, some out of the country. Uh, most of them uh, left happily. They uh, walked up and down the street, mm -hmm. and the park right out front. And most of them would be happy to have an outdoor patio. The local people have always want dogs. I mean, Carrie, Carrie has a nice place for people to eat out with dogs. At least Iker has it. We only have an inside patio where a dog has to be certified uh, to support dogs. Uh, so yeah, not only for COVID coming up, because <laughs> honestly, we put on masks twice or three times this year, service so taking them off for a month, put them back on, it's been unfortunate. But unfortunately, we're still in that same thing and we're probably going to be this summer. Uh, so my opinion, actually, I think it's a public service on the part of the town to provide a place for people to eat outside safely. A building permit will be required, of course, if we come to agreement on a lease, which will address the actual construction methods, although Brett can talk about it tonight if you ask codes. But there'll be fire codes as far as how many people can sit out there. We're thinking maybe 40. 
uh, ABC was uh, asked last year, they came and looked at it, it says no problem, you need a fence, you have to have a sign, it says no alcohol behind this. You can't just walk up in there, you'll have to get a reservation from the hostess to be able to go in there, and then there'll be just one point to come out with that sign. So we have to have a fence around it, and some landscaping. Uh, ABC signed, nobody signed off on it, but we checked with people that came, I mean, if I had in writing, I could say we already got approval, but we don't. So all I'm asking right now is uh, for you to consider that, because actually last time we took a vote and it was like three to three or something, and, and, and we were asking for something to happen. Now I'm all I'm asking you to do is get together legally with the town manager and yourselves and vote, and hopefully you get a majority to proceed. That's all I'm asking. Questions you can ask. Thank you. Normally at our uh, uh at our public sessions is we don't really have a question and answer period and we by our rules don't take any action on request during the public session but I'm sure that the board will be taking this matter up shortly thank, thank you Mr. Murphy appreciate you being here thank you. I think we had no one else signed up for a public session so under uh, new business uh, request uh, for approval for events and uh, street closures and we have with us tonight Mr. Dave Lynn who will make that presentation. Mr. Lynn. As many of y'all know I do a lot of the fundraisers and events in the community. This year I'd like to ask for permission to, to close down a couple of streets that are benefiting the area also and also helping out too. First one would be for May of 14th for the radio station asked me to host their car show on Isle Street. And I was gonna ask permission tonight to close it from Isle Street to Church Street for the car show they do every year. And that would be one of them. The second one would be on June 18th would be the annual Braveheart 5K and then also the Cherokee Scottish Heritage Celebration Day from 7.30 till three o'clock. And that would be Main Street and Iowa Street. Also, on August 6th, we have the 80s flashback benefit, um, <coughs> excuse me, uh, the parade. So we moved it now since we've had, I read and saw online. So we moved it to a, later in the day at the start of, set up at 5 o'clock, the parade would start at 6 to make it easier for the merchants on Main Street. Um, and then also we have the September 10th, the annual Never Forget 5K, the benefit the fire department. That would take place from, uh, as you see, from 8.30 in the morning until about 10.30, when WIA, if I'm correct, next to the high school, would be closed just for two hours, but it would also be limited to residential only. And then the following one would be November 24th for the Cold Turkey 5K, which will benefit the uh, Shop of Coffee Share. And since we, this year, it, I mean, last year it was so big, um, we had 344 racers, and so we had to relocate. So we, we thought we'd go ahead and do the same route as the Never Forget 5K route. And that would be, be easier to control the traffic and all that stuff. And so that's why I would just ask for your permission and work with y'all on doing these closures. I would really appreciate it. Any questions? Questions from the board? Go ahead, Joe. <laughs> Every year. <laughs> no, I'm just going to wait. <laughs> Counter attack. <laughs> no, I don't know. Anybody got any problems? Is this good with police chiefs and fire chiefs? I mean, I would be working with them one on one, yes. Yeah. Okay. This is good with you guys? It's found me. Seems to be the fire chief and then the police chief concur that they don't see a problem. If they do, now's the time to uh, bring it up. Uh, chief Harold? One day we'll do like what you've been doing recently since we've changed some operational um, measures at the police department and communicate with the uh, captain field operations for the appropriate staffing for traffic uh, safety. And then, yeah, then, yeah. And Mr. Holland's been good on that one too, working with me on that one. So it's been a quick response and so mm -hmm. I see no issue with that. Which one's a seven to three? The seven three is the, that's the Cherokee Scottish 
Heritage Celebration. That would be on Main Street, but also on Isla and Church Street. <coughs> it, last year was the first year we had it, and it was very successful. A lot of merchants actually uh, um, boomed their business, boomed on it. So. I can't personally speak to that. Yeah. We had a very, one of our busier days of the year, our business sales on that day. So. Do you poll the businesses on Main Street and ask them? No, I have to be, truthfully, I, I won't lie to you, I have not, but um, a lot of them have actually afterwards come in and go, hey Dave, that was great, thank you for doing that. In the past, I know like the, the 80s flashback parade has brought traffic downtown and kept them downtown, so I'm trying to do a lot more events like the 80s flashback parade to try to do, some of the merchants actually did a scavenger hunt, 80s theme, to trap individuals downtown and all that stuff too. So I try to keep everybody downtown instead of saying, okay, we got a couple of hours to kill, let's go. So that's why with also too with some of the merchants saying the time was hurting their business we moved the time for the setup to be five o'clock and the parade would start at six and then the parade would end down by lazy hiker where they the way we had our main event for the 80s flashback would end down there so i'd like to ask if, if this council would uh, uh, make mandatory for day to coordinate with the captain one month one council meeting prior to each event, just in case there's any unknowns right now that may occur between now and then that may need to be adjusted before we give a formal approval or not, if that's okay. Seems like a reasonable request. Is that, is that agreeable with you, Dave? I, mean, I have no problem. I, I mean, I actually, I was gonna ask Amy, actually, if she'd be, help us out too, be part of the Cherry Scottish Heritage thing too, to be, help us out a little bit too, and okay. guide us along the path there too. Okay. That would be no issue at all. I mean, we do, like I said, I know the role of you know insurance, 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 which I 100% agree on because I've seen it before in the past. And so I, I agree, no problem at all. That is the easiest. Yeah. And we have a local business here, at least one, and they're not they're not objecting. And the only the only problem I've ever heard was that the back parking lot was closed off there. So. Yeah. Um, I, I, that's the past. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let the past go. I mean. The, but as long as we're keeping that yeah. parking lot open, yeah. yeah. I mean that's why that's why we moved the time to five o'clock set up time and six o'clock parade time. So and I think actually that would be a good time too for the the um, Christmas parade before the winter wonderland. I always thought that would be a perfect time to keep in mind for the future instead of doing eat on Thanksgiving weekend. So anything else? Mr. Murphy, did you have anything? Yeah, like that? I, I just want to say nothing against Dave's closures, but I had I was going to say something about New Year's Eve. I didn't realize we talked about closures this far ahead, but we had 95, actually 100 reservations for New Year's Eve night. Starting at five o'clock, the road was closed. The entire Main Street was shut down. Okay, mm. people that know the place know how to make five turns and end up behind, come in the restaurant. People that don't, it's hard to find our restaurant. I, and if nothing happens until like 9:30. It, it, it dropped the ball, so I don't see why you have to close the road down there at five o'clock when you when no, and nobody asks us, and not you, okay? I don't know who decides to close the road at nine at five o'clock on New Year's Eve. But I was going to bring it up in December, but if you <laughs> decided now, please do early say now, okay? We'd like to be able to have a hundred people come to the restaurant between five and nine, and then maybe close the road at the at the at the gazebo and let them exit to the left you know because nothing happens down there till nine and that that's good feedback as to what chief is talking about a month beforehand get everything back together revisit it and then you decide the exact yeah. time i mean and I, I agree with that too i mean but, but like i said the parade would start at six o'clock i mean we'd have um church street would be this is set up area that's all the only time i would ever use that for um but like I said, every merchant on Main Street and around the area knows me. Uh, pretty much, I bug the heck out of you. If you have a business, I'm, I'm mailing you a letter in the mail about what events going on. So I'm their biggest pain in the butt, any merchant on Main Street, pretty much. So. I'll, I'll make a motion to approve it. I'll just, I'll just say this. The town manager has reviewed this, didn't have any uh, concerns that I'm aware of, and, and did I recommend, said, I think the, board, did re great, recommend the board uh, give it favorable consideration. So. Mr. Culpepper, if you're ready to make a motion, yeah, we'll so move with these street closures as written. I'll have a motion. Second. Uh, with, with Chief's advice, that yeah, yeah. we yeah. revisit a, a, a month in advance to, to yeah. iron out any oh, strange yeah. details. That's our understanding, too. Thank you, Mr. Culpepper. Mr. Kimsey, second the motion. Every second, yeah. Mr. Mr. A motion Mayor, second. be reminded that you need to take a roll call vote since you have a remote. We'll take a roll call vote and uh, with raising your hands as well so that our clerk. Since we are 
one of our members is uh, in, in remote and the rule says that we need to make that uh, clear for our clerk. So uh, any other discussion concerning the motion? If not, those in favor of the motion, please signify it by raising your right hand. I can call on uh, Mr. Guffey. Uh, yes. Votes yes. <laughs> okay. Mr. Collins? Yes. Mr. Culpepper? Yes. Ms. Lane? Yes. Mr. Kimsey? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. It's unanimous. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Dave, for uh, all your work, for putting all this together. We really appreciate your efforts. Yes? I have a late follow-up question. Okay. <laughs> the trash pickup and that kind of thing is all planned for with each one of these so that, okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Good question. Many people may not be aware of that. I'm glad you brought that up. We do have uh, another item under new business, an update on our skate park. Uh, Anders Ike, project engineer, Jay Dunn. And also consider approval of a request for the design from our town manager. And she'll comment on that. So we'll have an update and then we'll take the second part of that, uh, that issue up. Thank you all for having us tonight. Um, Amy, you kind of direct me on what all you'd like me to update on. I'll let y'all know that we have moved forward with the design team, um, started getting preliminary plans, working with one specific design. Not sure if that will be shown here tonight. Um, we are in the process of working with a nonprofit to be able to channel all funds raised for this project. Still looking for a start date of roughly April of this year. Um, so coming up in no time really um, don't really have many other updates we will be uh, knowing now who's really in charge of a lot of marketing and fundraising I may get in contact with you to, to help with fundraising efforts for the town or for us to, to get the money raised for this event um, <coughs> that's really all the update I have at this time <coughs> Amy I don't know if you want me to you have anything to add the designs up for us. Thank you so much. Um, there's two design options you had in your packet. Uh, the first design option that you had was what was originally suggested by the Skate 2A community as well as um, with some input from other areas. The second design is after the design team um, through Pillar Designs actually made some modifications for it to, to change the heights of certain things for the actual um, skate park to flow better. Uh, the reason why you see both of these designs is just to let you know and to let the community know that we did incorporate everything that you suggested. We just have to look at things from a certain safety perspective as well. Um, the only thing we have to choose if you approve the design tonight is the two access points that we want to have so that people can enter into the skate park itself. And also by choosing to approve a design tonight, then we'll know a little bit more as far as actual cost, how much the skate park itself is going to cost. So one thing has to happen before we can get a better estimate. Do we have any idea or can you tell us where we stand as far as fundraising goes? The amount? Right now I think we're around 10 or 15. How much? 10 or 15,000. 10 or 15,000? Yes, sir. Okay. And I will add kind of to the whole concept is there's a, a skate community here in Franklin and they kind of develop the design of what they ideally would like to see and what the design team pillar designs will do is they'll have conversations with that skate community and the skate community of Franklin to further a design and because they're professionals in designing skate parks they kind of incorporate things that they see and just knowledge they have to help with flow and stuff like that um, not sure I know all the terminology of skating but that's that's my understanding of where we can lean on the design team to help finalize that basically concept a was skate 28's drawing Correct. that they like mm -hmm. concept b is after pillar designs got it and made it more just developed it yeah further. developed it further okay. made um changes to the heights of certain things from a risk perspective we were very happy to see that okay um, so. 
Uh, what was her take on the same thing? Certainly what it sounds um, like. If you go to the concept B. <laughs> what was the group's take on the changes to their design? Well. Or to their concept? Essentially, we were going to have a Zoom call with them the week of the 17th, but we wanted to make sure that you guys were on board as a council, being as though it's technically the town's project to make sure we were continuing to move in the right direction. Being as though we took their original plans, we don't foresee a lot of pushback at all. And the fact that Pillar Designs does this for a living, I think everybody will. will so they're taking obviously personal safety and whatnot yes. in mind when they mm -hmm. got you. Just curious, you suggested that after the we went on concept A or B and made that decision, we might have a better idea as to the cost. Mm -hmm. But getting to that point, I mean, there's, uh, is the three players in this, the contractor, the town, and then the contributors, is there anybody else who would be helping to pay for this? That would be a part of the fundraising efforts is what Skate 2-8 was gonna be investing in. Um, they're looking at different grants through the Skate Park Project as well as the Tony Hawk Foundation to be able to have some additional funding. And from a town perspective, what I was looking at is how much is this gonna cost if there happens to be a difference between what money they can raise and, and who would be expected to absorb that cost. It's never been clear to me mm -hmm. what, what percentage of this that the town is gonna to be expected to shoulder or any clue really how much that percentage might be is it I mean are we just out here on a lark on at this? this point the only thing that you as a town council have committed to is the fifteen thousand dollars for the design you haven't committed to any additional funds or anything yeah. like that so until we know a more fixed cost of what it's going to cost to do this construction and then whatever resources are going to be available through donations and particularly the grants we really honestly can't in order to it. establish a, a more realistic cost you need to know which plan and which design we're dealing with and yes, sir. Because it looks like the recommendation concrete and yeah, the, the, different, the recommendation is things. the recommendation yeah. to consider uh, the concept B and then you're able to then put together uh, a budget on what it would cost in order to construct that skate park according to that schedule? Yes. Miss Lane? Who's going to, it was my understanding and I wasn't on the council, but I what, did come to meetings during the time that that y'all were going to fund this and what the overrun was was going to be fundraised. Is that, I mean, that, that Dunn was going to do it? I think we, we are looking to partner with the town, not fund it solely. Yeah, I, I think it was an idea was you get a concept, then we have a target amount of money to raise, and then we fundraise physically ourselves as well as the Skate to a community if we want to see it happen, and we try to get money, and I think it was a, a match that J.E. Dunn likes to match to whatever kind of community funding the community can bring. They will not match to a full community, they'll match internally to okay. what we can fund, they'll okay. match up to a certain cap. Okay. Um, but what we were looking to do is we'll raise money, the town of Franklin will raise money, put the money all together, and we will help manage the actual construction of the park. And we were talking about getting a lot of discounts on concrete, I think. That's right. We'll be working with our trades, and, and we've already gotten some commitments out of the people working on the hospital with us. And y'all are still committed. I mean, y'all are still all in on, yes, we on, are. on helping and with this. Yeah. Our trades are still committed, most of them. Uh, some of them have moved on. Of course, at that point, it, it's it's not cost effective for them to come back. But our trades have jumped in, and they will help. Uh, HCA, we're building the hospital for, has uh, shown interest in, in helping out with it too. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But yeah, our our trades will be here. It'll be free labor. It'll be labor from us. It'll be free labor from them. And discounted materials is what we're looking at, and or free materials. So, again, we have a full cost and a full. We can actually take a set of construction documents, say this is how much concrete we need or steel we need or this is what we need, then we can actually look at it and go out from there. And we'll have those construction documents after we approve That's right. a plan. Mm -hmm. And we've already paid for the plan. Correct. You've you have paid 000. for the design, the 15000 the town is taken care of, um, and that gets us that set of plans. Mm -hmm. 
Can, can someone speak to the timetable? I know you're moving along very well with the hospital construction. And uh, as I recall from the previous meeting, we wanted to have this park finished by the time you finish the construction of the correct. hospital. Is that correct? Yes, sir. We are, we're planning, we would like to start construction in April. Um, we are, we're scheduled to be complete with the hospital at the end of June, right at the beginning of July. So we'd like to be able to build it starting in April and finish prior to yeah. us completing the hospital. This is this is the strangest concept that I've been involved in in, in my many, many years on the board. But I can tell you it was pitched to us by the contractor as your contribution to the town along working with a big thing like the hospital. So let's back up there. I'm the one that originally pitched it and I didn't pitch this as us. We came to the to Nathaniel and said, Hey, what can we do to help the community? And he said, There's a big push for a skate park. And we said, We said from the very beginning and we still are committed that we'll do whatever we can to help with that. Okay. And that's that's that was our commitment and, and we did mention there is internal fund matching. We have to have a non profit. We have a non profit set up and what we do, Jay Dunn internally Jay Dunn has a certain cap, and I don't know what that is, so I couldn't speak to it. But they'll they'll match that, and then we've reached out to all of our trades. We've reached out to concrete companies, rebar, things like that, saying, "Hey, we want to build this." So our commitment is the same as it was then. We're here to do everything we can to help with this and, and make this happen. And it's kind of has to happen almost, given <laughs> the publicity and the interest and the enthusiasm. But we're still here not knowing at the end how much of the party we're paying for. And again, voting on this, let us know what, you know, what, what, which concept it is, then we can go back and look at the material costs. The labor, <clears throat> pretty sure we've got that covered. It's just down to material costs. And then- well, uh, as far in, yeah. yeah. And then as far as Escape 28, I, I don't know what they've raised. I know that every one of the events, when you do shut down the streets, they're out there raising money for this. So they have money that they want to donate. We have uh, commitments uh, on money, uh, again, that we can donate. But knowing what you're going to build is going to let us know what that cost would be. And will your cost include like everything the town would have to have or I mean like a fence and all that kind of stuff or who will price out that kind of thing when they get the total design it'll have the whole concept of the park the only additional thing would be additional benches or anything like that that can be put in at a different point in time and insurance mm -hmm. it's not going to cost us any more money to vote on this tonight no, so I don't see I mean we've already paid for it so we might as well pick one sounds like there won't be I don't think there's going to be a fence. I mean, we may put some benches out there or something like that, but I don't think it's going to be fenced. I guess the action of the board tonight is to decide if you're going to go ahead and approve the recommendation. The recommendation, as I see it, is uh, to approve uh, option B, which is uh, the design that's been enhanced by the developers. Uh, that's a recommendation from the manager. And uh, I guess, uh, as Mr. Lewis says, uh, the board needs to take some action. Uh, the, the town did provide the $15,000 for the design work. As Mr. Lewis stated, we need to decide if you want to go ahead with this, and if so, we'll entertain a motion to approve the recommendation from the manager concerning the design for the proposed park. Is there a motion? Motion. Thank you, Mr. Collins. Second. Second. Thank you, Mr. Lewis. We need to specify which concept. Yeah, B. B. I'm sorry. B is the only one that's acceptable to us from a risk standpoint. So I mean, it has to be B or your, yeah. your designer designed B. I think okay. Fair enough. Weigh that pretty heavily. It makes it easy. Uh, and this, yeah. the skate park will be put on our insurance as an asset, just like a building that we have. There's specific coverage for skate parks. And just as a reminder, one of the there's, a, there's a, a set of statutes that makes it possible for this kind of thing to happen and you not to have it all swallowed up by, by liability concerns for you know personal injury claims. There's, if, if you, you give reasonable supervision to the thing and make sure folks are wearing their you know, pads and helmets and whatnot, you, you, there is no, I mean, you explicitly have some, some breathing room from liability for that kind of thing. It might mean we have to look at fencing to be able to control 
comes in and that's all that kind of thing. But the, one, the ones that I've seen always have a sign posted that basically yeah. that says skate at your own risk. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, the Highlands doesn't have a fence, and I don't think Waynesville has a fence, so I don't know. Any further discussion? Thank you guys for hanging with us. We appreciate it. We have a motion and a second to approve it. All those in favor, please signify by raising your hand. The clerk will count, and Mr. Guffey. We'll yes. vote. All those opposed? I like sign the motion carries. Thank you. Thank you all. Those are the items we had for new business. The next one we had was our council retreat. We've been trying to figure out a time to do that as soon as we can. We have some new members. Uh, that. Uh, that uh, I haven't been through one of these before, I'm sure. Just so they may have had uh, similar training sessions and retreat and <laughs> strategic planning sessions in the past, and we've had them here. Uh, Mr. Kimsey probably went through training sessions and retreats uh, before, and uh, we uh, and Mr. Guffey, this is this is something that he's probably participated in before. But we really need to nail down a time to do that so that we can. Uh, uh, get our plans our, our 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 format that we had and i thought worked very well a couple of years ago when we were still able to meet in person and not have to wear a mask everywhere uh, was that we had a uh, a planning session the night before which is a dinner meeting at that dinner meeting we laid out the items we'd like to, dis to discuss and work on during the actual retreat which is the next day which will be on a saturday most likely and then uh, that all the time we needed on that Saturday, we were able to we would be able to discuss those items that were mentioned and brought up the night before. So what we need to know uh, in order to plan this is uh, what Friday night and Saturday is everyone available. The other thing that we were waiting to try to do is uh, have a chance to go through the essentials of government training class sponsored by the School of Government. And I've got some information on that. You may have already seen some of that, but uh, probably uh, we need to go ahead and plan this. And when that uh, that works out, we'll, uh, we'll 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 bring that in as well. But uh, is there a is there a weekend, a Friday and a Saturday uh, that uh, you take your calendars out and take a look and see what you've got going on? And uh, if we can nail down a timetable, we can go ahead and get this planning started. Mr. Collins, any any conflicts uh, for I'd say the latter half of January? I don't think so. Okay. Mr. Culpepper? Saturdays are never good, but if we can start early and get out of there early, then okay. I mean I, I don't have a choice. Okay. And the Friday we would start in the evening anyway. So we'll yeah. start in the evening and, and we'll get a lot started that night. The twenty second yeah. jumped out at me. Twenty second looks good. As good as any others. How about right. you, Mr. That's that'd be fine. That is right before the essentials. So. Yeah, the 22nd. Yeah. How does the 22nd look, Mr. Kimsey and Mr. Lewis? I can make it work. That look sure. okay. That gives us that gives us some time, and we and we've we've used a facilitator in the past. What about uh, Stacy? Stacy, okay? Stacy, yeah. I'm about for yeah. <laughs> Stacy. Do you have any problem with the 22nd? Does that work okay? That would be the 21st. Is the Friday night, and That's the 22nd right. yeah. is Saturday. The 21st be on Friday night, and the 22nd would be. On Saturday, we usually try to get started pretty early on Saturday and finish up as soon as we can after lunch. So we'll we'll shoot for those. And uh, I've talked to the manager briefly about this. In the past, we've used the facilitator. Mr. Russ Harris has facilitated our retreats in the past. He's now the executive director of the Southwestern Commission. He may or may not be available. We'll check with him and see. And if he is not available, maybe someone else on his staff may be available. The other option that we may have is the uh, local government center at Western Carolina University. They have some folks who uh, work a lot with managers and boards and uh, folks throughout the region, so that may be another possibility. So I've asked the, the manager if she would work on trying to locate us a, uh, a facilitator who could handle that for us. It's good to have a facilitator that, that, that gives everybody else a chance to participate without having to worry about keeping notes and records and so forth but uh is that would we use the facilitator on friday night 
Well, it'd be good to have the facilitator there to be aware of the of the topics that we're going to be discussing the next day, and uh, it, it'll be it'd be pretty much informal on that evening before. Yeah. Uh, that just gives us a brainstorming idea, so that when we start the next morning, we don't have to take uh, an hour or so to go ahead and decide what we're going to talk about. I think we've skipped the facilitator on the evening before, but. I, the I facilitator is available. I'd like from the city. If they, in if they with us. could, but it wouldn't be as. It wouldn't be a, absolutely, in, but but we would have a record of what we would like to talk about. Yeah. It, but it would be good for them to uh, do two things. No, number one, if they don't know us, get to know our especially our new members on the board, and also uh, then the, go ahead and lay our game plan out for the next day. And so uh, I hope that we can uh, we can do this and uh, come away with Sorry. some concrete uh, plans and strategies for things that the board wants to accomplish over the next year. So we're looking at the 21st, 22nd possibly, right? Right, 21st of January and evening it, and, and as the 22nd. And probably be here on Saturday? Probably be right here in this room on Saturday. And at a, at a dinner place on Friday night? Exactly. But for what we want to discuss in our retreat, we really need to have it roughed out before Friday night, meaning that we need to go ahead and give Amy our ideas between now and then, because then we can kind of hone it more on Friday and be able. But if we start the whole cloth on Friday, I'm afraid. I that's think that's an excellent idea, Mr. Collins. If you would, the board members, so they would take a few minutes to, to brainstorm on some ideas that you'd like the board to discuss at the retreat and the planning session. And if you could uh, give our manager a list of those items that you're concerned and you want to discuss, she'll have those ready for the evening. And, and if there's other things that may come up during that evening, we can always add those to it. But that would be a step ahead as far as getting this thing planned out. That's a very good suggestion. Okay. Uh, then we'll shoot for that. The other, and we'll let you know as soon as we were able to nail down the facilitator for the for that uh, for that meeting. The next thing is that. Uh, there was supposed to be a uh, essentials class for new council members or returning council members. It's always good to get a refresher once in a while, right, Mr. Culpepper? That's correct. But uh, they uh, had so many cases of uh, COVID outbreak that the, the one scheduled was as closest to us in person was the 6th and the 7th of January. And that has had to be canceled because of the outbreak of COVID. And so they have postponed that one. The next available time is by uh, video teleconference on the 26th, 27th, and 28th of January. And so uh, if you'd like to do it that way, that's an option. And it's open to all the board members. Uh, the other one is if you want to do it in person, there is another schedule probably going to be in April, March or April in Winston-Salem. And there also, I talked to Carl Stenberg, who is the director for the School of Government, He's going to try to see if they can schedule another one in our region somewhere, uh, but he hasn't been able to get back to us in, in that. If, if we find out ahead of time, you can always, if you sign up for one and, and there's still time, you may also be able to go ahead and change it to the time or the place that you want to, either in person or video conference. If I'm honest, if I do it on video, I'm just going to blank my screen and turn my mic off and do work. So, but I'm going to have to do it in person. So we'll have to set up some sort of time schedule of when, when I guess we expect each other to go, and we'll have to pick a spot because I, I, I'll mail it in if it's on the screen. Yeah, the other thing that's involved in this uh, session for uh, uh, essentials is that there is a requirement for all new or reelected or elected board members, including mayors, to go through the ethics yes. requirement training, which lasts about an hour or two. That's scheduled along with this uh, regular class for the last part of the last day of that session. And if it's on video, then we can do it on video. Some of us may need to do part of it or all of it, but that's available. We'll try to put all this information together and the manager's office will send out everybody the latest information on us and ask what your preferences are and we can handle the, uh, the registration and the sign-up. There you go. That work? Road trip to Wednesday. Uh, road trip. Okay. You have 10 months to do the ethics training. I mean, you don't, I mean, you can just go on any time. 
Play yeah. midnight if you, when you want one out. You went through mine. You could do it any time. Yeah. It print out your certificate, and you were done with it. Once you, once they've actually recorded it for this year, then it's available via webinar like mm -hmm. that, and you can do it at any yeah. point in time. Yeah. But the fact is, is they hadn't recorded it at this point because they have to keep changing the in-person gotcha. ones. Yeah, they haven't had the first one yet. Last year, we were very fortunate to be able to have it right here in Franklin. Uh, we didn't do that this year. But uh, I'm looking forward to it. I think you all are too. We'll learn a lot. Uh, I know most of the people who put this on. I've worked with them in different aspects in the past. And I think you'll be impressed with the information they'll be able to share. And there'll be some, be some questions about the proper role and activities of us as elected officials that they'll be able to answer, hopefully. <coughs> The uh, next uh, town council meeting is now scheduled for February 7th, and uh, the town offices will be closed on uh, January 17th, which is Martin Luther King Jr. holiday. Uh, his actual birthday is January the 15th, the same day as mine, by the way, <laughs> and so uh, we'll celebrate together. Uh, but we'll be closed, the town offices will be closed on that Monday, the January 17th. And at this point in time, we have on the agenda to enter to a closed session under General Statute 143.318 11.83, which is attorney-client privilege to discuss the handling of a settlement of a claim. And so in order to go into closed session, we'd need a motion by the board. Do you want to go around the table if anybody has any closing remarks? Before we can we do, do that, that first, if you like to, before we go into, into closed session. And we'll start <coughs> with our Vice Mayor, Mr. Joe Collins. I'll check down. Uh, thanks to the Craft Trees for a wonderful event, Ruby Drop, and quickly while it's on my mind, skate parks and risk. If 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 we're not willing to be somewhat laissez-faire with this skate park, um, we probably shouldn't build it. I mean, if we're not gonna have this as a place for the skateboarding community, if we're gonna try to micromanage it and fence it in and control it, they're just gonna destroy it and they'll they'll vandalize it and it it. If we're not doing it for the skateboarders, let's don't do it. I mean, the whole idea is to give them a place that's their own, that they can go. Whatever's going on in their private life, they can go there and they can skate. And they can learn how to overcome adversity in this skate park. We're worried about risk of a broken arm and how it's going to affect us, but we're not worried about the long-term risk of what's happening to our youth in this community. Our, our youth is, they're in a bad spot. Nobody gives them anything. Everybody calls them pieces of crap and, and pushes them to the, to the flank, the outskirt of the community. And it's aggravating to see nobody willing to commit and say, these are people too, these are people in our community. They need help. If we're not going to give them a place that they can call their own, that we're not going to micromanage, we shouldn't do it. It's about helping them. We're worried about risk in the short run, about a broken bone. We should be worried about risk in the long run. Drug addiction. If you don't give these kids a place where they can learn wherewithal and learn how to overcome adversity, that's what they need. Thank you, Mr. Culpepper. Okay. If you didn't know it, Mr. Culpepper is very passionate about this project and he's worked on it for a long time. This is not just something that came up in the last few months. But uh, I've been on the board two years and I think we started talking about it probably even before I came on the board two years ago. But Mr. Culpepper has, uh, has been very active in pursuing this, and I think for the right reasons. Thank you for those comments. Ms. Slane. Um, I don't have anything. I'll just pass at this point. Okay. I'll save you to last. Mr. Lewis. Um, nothing else to say. Um, thanks, Adam. Appreciate you will and serve. And uh, caught Stacy on there a couple times. Uh, Hawking is a Cowie school merch, his coffee cup, so well done there. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Guffey. I did not solicit donations. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would agree with David that uh, New Year's Eve was a great event, and I, I also appreciate the folks who put it on in downtown. Other than that, I don't have much of a voice, so. Uh, so thanks. Thank you. And last but certainly not least, Mr. Kimsey. Um, I'd just like to thank the board again for giving me the opportunity to be here. Can't wait to kind of hit the ground running and work with you guys and get a lot done. Um, and secondary or tertiarily, basically thank Mr. Crabtree and the town and everybody that contributed to New Year's. It was a really, really big event. Uh, brings a lot of business, really brings a lot of community too. So. Thank you. 
Well, we're ready to go into 2022. We're all expecting a very good year this year. It's not gonna be like 2020 or 2021. Uh, we're optimistic and we're looking for good things to happen here in our hometown. So thank you all for being here tonight. God bless you and happy new year. Now, is there a motion we go into closed motion, session? Jordan, Second. Thank you, Mr. Collins and Mr. Culpepper. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by raising your hand. Mr. Clerk, have you got those? Thank you, sir. Any opposition? If not, the motion carries. We'll now be in closed session. None. If, 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 if we try to control it, none. If, if, if we give them a place where it's their own and we don't yell at them for, for painting graffiti on it and we don't yell at them all the time, lots will use it. Lots. And you're, you're, sorry, you're